this is probably the first time that this has ever been done, a Mus Muslim artist painting the Holocaust. And for us, it's very important because as the Council of Muslims Against Antisemitism, we have hosted an event for Holocaust Education Week every year for the last five years or so. And so this was our contribution to Holocaust Education Week. And you will have seen from the crowd that came that there were equal numbers, 50-50, I'd say, of Muslims and non-Muslims. And this is an incredible journey and just the beginning for us and for the artist because this is going to open so many doors and hopefully it will educate people and bring them together to understand that you don't have to be part of a community to feel its pain. David Menzies for Rebel News here in Toronto and folks I'm at a very special art exhibit. It is involving paintings of the Holocaust and get this, the painter is the gentleman beside me, Ramel Khan. He is a Muslim and he's gonna tell me about his paintings, what inspired him to do this and what the reaction has been. Just will you hear his story. Well, this is a mother and child. Uh, as you can see, uh, this was when, of course, it all started happening and people were uh, dislocated from their little towns and villages and, and fled. And with whatever belongings they had, their kids, you know, a, a suitcase, whatever. And this is where a mother and child uh, are, are fleeing uh, the eminent uh, danger their way. You can see the feeling, you can see the eyes, you can see the baby, you know, and, and, and I wanted it that way, uh, you know, and I, I wanted it to be like, did it happen? Did it really happen? Did we as a human uh, beings do this? And guess what? Yeah, we did. Rimmel is like an adopted son. He gives me just as much trouble as my own sons do. But he is also a member of the Council of Muslims Against Anti-Semitism. And as of today, I would say he is the most active member. He is a known media personality in Pakistani circles. He has worked in Pakistan, the United Kingdom, the United States and Canada in creative arts to promote culture and diversity. On the one hand, he has worked with prominent Bollywood personalities, and on the other, he has helped promote his Islamic heritage, as you can see, see through those beautiful calligraphy paintings. He is not a painter by profession, and he insists on saying this. When he's called an artist, he says he's a... A hobbyist. A hobbyist. <laughs> I have no idea what that means, but <laughs> this is what he says. But as a creative person in media arts, he does express his innermost feelings, through the strokes of a brush. I'm so proud to call him my adopted son. And I will let him explain what inspired you to make Holocaust events. Well, we, we all decided as the council uh, to do an event for the month of November as a Holocaust month, education month. And it was Sohail's idea to do uh, uh, something different and to do a, 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 an artistic expression of, of the event. Uh, so that's how it came into being. And then I started sort of conceptualizing the ideas and uh, that's what uh, this is. This is more of what emotions and thoughts that I had. Uh, not a painter or an artist, so you know, obviously nothing is right, but, uh, but it's, it's the idea and the thought. And I hope that I could do it justice because it was a horrific, horrific event in mankind history. And as a Muslim, I'm, I'm proud to, uh, to express that. As you can see, the, the base is uh, the Berlin uh, Holocaust Memorial. Right. And my friend Guido, who's part of our council, uh, he suggested that uh, let's make something on, on the resistance uh, that the brave, uh, young brave people uh, did uh, resist uh, the occupiers in whatever country, whether it was Poland, whether it was, you know, well, France, whether it was Germany and the Jewish resistance. So this was uh, my depiction of Warsaw, but I, I based it on on the, the Berlin Memorial uh, for the Holocaust. And I said, uh, mix it together because that memorial is in honor of everybody that died. 
And you have um, cherry picked quotations right from the Quran yeah. that coincide with yes. the artwork. We picked, we picked uh, not just quotations from the Quran, but also from the Talmud, but not in this one on some, uh, where they're, they're saying similar things, but in their own uh, in their own way. So, Remel, as I said in the preamble, uh, you are a Muslim artist. You are also a member of the Council of Muslims Against Anti-Semitism. First question, what inspired you to paint pictures depicting scenes from the Holocaust? Well, first of all, uh, David, I'm not a real artist. I'm a hobbyist. Oh, you're an artist. <laughs> and to me, this was a great, great opportunity to represent uh, Muslims in acknowledging uh, the Holocaust. And that's why we call the exhibition, There Is No Denial. Uh, and also because of our organization, we thought this year being November, uh, the month of uh, Holocaust Education Month, uh, we thought instead of just doing the typical event, you know, let's do something different. And I, as a hobbyist, uh, painting calligraphy, usually Arabic calligraphy, uh, was sort of uh, roped in or, uh, you know, uh, encouraged uh, to think. And my paintings are not uh, professional artist uh, paintings, but they're very thought uh, provoking, emo emotive uh, paintings. And there's a lot of thought behind each and every piece that I did. Uh, and, and I can tell you, um, when I was watching some of the people looking at some of your artwork, Rimmel, I mean, some were moved to tears. And I got to ask you, too, you told me off camera, even when you were very young, you were somewhat fascinated by this very dark period in mankind's history. What accounts for that fascination? Of course, uh, just as a student of history, of mankind, of humanity, you know, it was one of the worst periods of our lives, of our modern day lives. Uh, that uh, humankind has suffered. So how can you not be, you know, uh, interested in knowing more about it and accepting what had happened? And to me, that was the, the it, it is always, it wasn't like just this month I decided, oh, this is something that I, I've always been fascinated, intrigued, and very interested uh, in the topic of the Holocaust. Well, this one is Auschwitz, as you know, uh, the building, and this is the tracks, and this is where the trains used to take them in. And I didn't want to uh, paint the trains and all that. I just wanted uh, people, uh, sort of like the specter of the people that have gone through those tracks, you know. And uh, there were people, again, from all walks of life, all ages, and it was a, uh, it was to me that these are the, these, this is the specter of what was, what these tracks and what that building meant. Truly was the final destination for all these people. The final destination, the final solution. I'm a director of academic and community affairs at the uh, Consulate of Israel, and I mean, getting an invite to an event like this is very meaningful, not just for my career, you know, people who have been part of the Jewish people, but also for me personally. Uh, as Rahil knows, um, my family is from India, and my grandmother was born and raised in Karachi, and um, I grew up with her stories, hearing about um, the positive and unfortunately some negative experiences that the community did go through during the partition. Um, but little, you know, I'm like thinking, sorry, I'm getting a little emotional, but I was very close with her, and I'm just thinking, like, if she knew that I was at an event like this amongst friends, you know, um, I don't, like, I, don't, I can't imagine like what her opinion would be. To me, I was thinking, when that, at that instant, what did these people think? And to me, that was that moment that I wanted to capture and capture of different women, different age groups, different uh, walks of life. And that's why I had a little bit of color because somebody said, well, you know, it's so dark. Why do you have color? I said, well, because they were people like you and me. They were normal people like before this moment. They were mothers, sisters, secretaries, daughters, teachers, artists, pianists, you know, whatever. Uh, and they weren't like uh, sick or something, you know, and then, then, no, they were just normal, normal people and they were thrown into this hell. And that's why I had uh, different, different colors. 
here we are. We, there are still people who are survivors of the Holocaust who are still alive today. And yet we have seen anti-Semitism ramp up. We see various vested interest groups um, cling on to Holocaust denial or they, you know, minimize the numbers of people who died during the Holocaust. And it seems to be getting worse and worse in recent years. What do you account for that? It's a sad commentary on where we are going as mankind. That's all I can say. I mean, the line was never again, but I don't think it ever stopped. I think it'll it'll just continued in different forms and it's just fabricated itself and manifested in various different forms of hatred. And that's all there is to it. I come from a part of the Muslim world which tells me to hate the Jews. Yet it is my Jewish brothers and sisters who stand by me when I'm attacked and support me when I need them. How can I hate them? I come from a country where Islamophobia is invoked in every breath. Yet, they have no word to describe their own phobias against women, minorities, and those who follow a different path. I come from a country where expressing support for Israel and Zionism is a sin. So yes, I am a forever sinner, for I am an unapologetic supporter of Israel's right to exist and have been called a Muslim Zionist. I come from a country where we are taught about us and them. Yet I learned from my good friend, Rabbi Abraham Cooper, about the meaning of tikkun olam, and I'm trying to heal the world in my own way. I come from a country where divisions and differences are constantly invoked. Yet I read in the Talmud, whoever destroys a soul, it is considered as if he has destroyed the entire world. And whoever saves a life, it is considered as if he saved the entire world. And I read in the Quran that killing one person is like killing all of humanity. So tell me, where is the difference? I come from a part of the world where the Holocaust was never discussed and even denied. Yet, I also come from a country where things were not always like this. And today, there are more people like me than we realize. So there is hope. I'm an eternal optimist. With the coming of the Abraham Accords, I believe that there is a way to peace. I stand here today to show you that art comes from the heart, and the heart of this Muslim artist was so moved by the genocide that he has expressed himself in these paintings. So all of you, friends, welcome to the exhibit title, There Is No Denial. This program, which I believe is the first of its kind, is sponsored by the Council of Muslims Against Antisemitism and its coalition partners across the globe. You told me off camera, this is your favorite well, painting. It is one of my favorite. Because one of your favorites. Yes, okay, because yeah. it shows, it shows uh, uh, all the different people that went through that and the expressions on their faces uh, and how there's defiance, there's hope, there is... You know, uh, there is shock, there is uh, uh, all different different expressions. There are young people, there are old people. And to me, that sort of just said it all, that it didn't matter. It didn't matter. And the name of the painting is Yearning for Hope. Yeah. And it seems like a very hopeless situation, isn't it? You're in the, um, uh, the uniforms of a concentration no, camp no, prisoner. There was no hope. And you're behind barbed wire. There was no hope. Yeah. There was no hope. And you told me, too, that this yellow is significant, the yeah, pigmentation. I put that yellow in there uh, simply because that was the color uh, that they used to put in the Star of David, right. Jude, you know, where, where they used to make uh, literally uh, label people. And, I mean, it was a horrible time. I mean, you know, I, I there's not enough I can say about it. I mean, there's, there is just so horrible. Well, folks, I'm with our very own Rahil Raza. She is the chair of the advisory board of Rebel News. Rahil, this is an incredible depiction of art. As I said to um, Rimmel, it's a lot of these pieces, I call it a, a beautiful sadness. They're beautifully rendered paintings depicting a sad 
tragic, horrible time in human history. What is your take on Rimmel's art? I think it is absolutely inspirational and heartrending at the same time. You know, we live in times when people are not able to express themselves fully with so many restrictions. But here, this man, who is not a professional artist, who has never been trained, has just poured out his heart and his feelings into these paintings. And in our research, we discovered this is probably the first time that this has ever been done, a Mus Muslim artist painting the Holocaust. And for us, it's very important because as the Council of Muslims Against Anti-Semitism, we have hosted an event for Holocaust Education Week every year for the last five years or so. And so this was our contribution to Holocaust Education Week. And you will have seen from the crowd that came that there were equal numbers, 50-50, I'd say, of Muslims and non-Muslims. And this is an incredible journey and just the beginning for us and for the artist because this is going to open so many doors and hopefully it will educate people and bring them together to understand that you don't have to be part of a community to feel its pain. And Rahil, what do you make, it seems to me, and I think the statistics would back me up, that in recent years, we've seen an uptick in anti-Semitism. We've seen a spike in Holocaust denial. In our very own city, uh, back in May, I believe it was, um, the pro-Hamas demonstrators uh, going to City Hall chanting horrible things, uh, physically assaulting some of the Jewish counter-protesters. What is driving that? There is only one thing that is driving all the anti-Semitism, and it's a four-letter word, which is hate. And part of our effort is to eliminate that hate through education and through vision. I mean, this is so important because you'll notice that this exhibit is titled, There is No Denial. And it's a fact, there is no denial. But then after that, what do we do? We can say there is no denial, but we need to acknowledge. And this is the artist's way of acknowledging that a terrible genocide took place in the history of the world, the worst genocide ever, and that it cannot be denied. It needs to be understood for what it was so that people won't hate again, because hate leads to genocides. And sometimes the hate is official. You said when you were introducing the exhibit, Rahil, you come from a country, Pakistan, in which if you have a Pakistan passport, it is valid for every country in the world except one, Israel. So it's almost like institutionalized history uh, or, or um, uh, racism or hate or anti-Semitism to that specific uh, country and the people in it. And yet I would say that when we have a Muslim artist doing a depiction like this, having a public gallery, uh, acknowledging the horrors of the Holocaust, to me, well, as the saying goes, hope abounds. Hope does abound because this is the problem. You know, uh, xenophobia, bigotry, racism, they're all terrible things. But anti-Semitism is specifically institutionalized and it is different and we have to understand that. And the only way we can deal with it and all the other isms is through eliminating hate. And how do we eliminate hate? By getting to know each other better, by understanding where you come from, where I come from, what are our pains, what have we been through? And when we empathize with the other, you know, there is a beautiful saying in the Quran, which is my holy book that says, humanity is one community. And if we can understand that humanity is one community and we can learn to respect each other, which means we don't always have to like each other, but we need to respect each other. We need to understand and forgive and we have to move forward. So this is our step, our first step towards moving forward. I hope other communities will come together and also move with us. Hope abounds when I see a display by this, not only because of the profound artwork, but because you're not Jewish, you're a Muslim. And, and I'm not even an artist, so <laughs> there you go. Sir, I totally disagree with that statement. You are a artist through and through. And I'm just saying it's that there is hope in these paintings. Some of these are paintings that depict horrible events, but if we can have people of other faiths come together, there, I think there is hope for the human condition. I hope you're right.
Hey folks, the mainstream media might be cutting back its coverage during this time of COVID-19. Not us, we love to get out in the field and bring you the other side of the story, but it does come at a bit of a cost. So if you can kindly support our efforts by going to rebelfieldreports.com, that's rebelfieldreports.com. If you're able to kick in a buck or three as a donation, we would greatly appreciate that.